Here we have a cartoon of the lac operons genes that code for three enzymes involved in metabolizing lactose. This operon is transcribed as a single long mRNA encoding the three genes. It includes now a few other components. It includes the promoter, which is a, the sequence in front of the uh, first of the three genes, which is actually the binding site for the enzyme RNA polymerase. There is also a gene that historically was called the I gene. It is a regulatory gene, and we'll see its function in just a moment. So here we have transcription of the lactose operon and the three genes in the transcript itself with three translation start sites. So what's going to happen here is ribosomes are going to assemble at three different points on this mRNA. The ribosomes are going to move along the message, along each of the genes, and translate the Z, the Y, and the A protein. Now let's look at the regulation of the lac operon. There are several modes of regulation. Let's look at the induction of the lac operon, meaning turning it on. This occurs by a process called derepression. So here we have a molecule of RNA polymerase shown in green sitting on top of the promoter. You might expect this RNA polymerase having bound to the promoter to start moving to the right through the operator and into the Y, Z, and A genes, transcribing the entire operon. But instead, there is a gene called the repressor protein gene, or the I gene that I mentioned a moment ago. The protein that it codes for is an active repressor protein, and now we'll see when it is transcribed and translated. It sits on the operator and literally blocks movement of the RNA polymerase past its binding site on the promoter, and so you get no transcription. That means this operon will be inactive most of the time. When will it be active? It will be active when there's lactose around. As you may recall, E. coli would prefer to use glucose as an energy nutrient, but at times glucose might be limiting in the environment, and there may be some of this milk sugar, that's what lactose is, milk sugar around instead. And E. coli can use lactose as an alternative to glucose. It's not as efficient. Remember, lactose has one glucose molecule and one galactose molecule. The E. coli cell would have to expend a fair amount of energy, first of all splitting the lactose into the two sugars, galactose and glucose, and then converting the galactose into a usable sugar. So it would prefer to use glucose. But if there's limiting glucose around, this sort of thing might happen. If lactose is present, a small amount gets in the cell and a substance called allolactose is made, and that's the sugar you just saw moving into the region of the gene and binding to the repressor. And by binding to the repressor, it causes an allosteric change, change of shape. And the lactose repressor protein becomes unbound from the operator. And at that point, the RNA polymerase can begin transcription. And you see here the formation of a YZA transcript. Let's take a look now at positive regulation of the lac operon by cyclic AMP. If glucose is actually limiting, or if it's gone, the E. coli cell responds by synthesizing cyclic AMP. And the cyclic AMP binds to a protein in the cell called cap protein, or cyclic AMP binding protein. When cyclic AMP is bound to the cap protein, the cap protein is now an active gene regulator, an activator of transcription. So let's watch what happens. Here's our RNA polymerase sitting on the promoter. There is lactose in the environment, and a small amount of allolactose has been made, and this gene is moderately active in transcription. But look what happens when glucose is really absent, and there isn't any choice but to use lactose. Cyclic AMP goes up, cap protein becomes active, and binds to the operator. But in this case, the binding to the operator facilitates the initiation of transcription by RNA polymerase. And you get heavy-duty transcription of the gene, in other words, high levels of lac gene transcript being produced, so that the galactosidase protein and the other enzymes that are produced by the three genes are elevated. One is a galactoside permease, which increases the rate at which lactose can be brought into the cell. The permease is a facilitated transport protein. So when glucose is present and lactose is present, the gene is on, but to a moderate extent. When glucose drops to very low levels, the cells detect this, produce cyclic AMP, activate the cap protein, and increase transcription of the lac operon so the cell can really utilize lactose in the environment. So that's the regulation of the lac operon.